When is the last time you saw a camel in a black leather jacket smoking a cigarette in the commercials on TV? It's been a long time since any of us have seen Joe Camel, and some of us have not seen him at all. The reason for it is because the Food and Drug Administration deemed tobacco use an unhealthy habit. The FDA regulates unhealthy substances such as cigarettes and alcohol because they have the potential to do great harm to the body. Why are they not regulating refined sugar? I'd like to go over how refined sugar can be dangerous. Then I'd like to go over how the FDA could regulate its consumption. Refined sugar can affect your health negatively. High blood pressure, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease are all obesity-related diseases. In fact, cardio cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death in the United States. According to Boston University School of Medicine, increased sugar consumption is considered to be a contributor to the worldwide epidemics of obesity and diabetes and the consequent cardiometabolic risks. Not only is sugar dangerous, but it can also be addictive. An article in a medical hypotheses journal by L. Cyber states that a possible explanation for overeating is that processed foods with high concentrations of sugar and other refined sweeteners, refined carbohydrates, fat, salt, and caffeine are addictive substances. Regardless of the amount of public health education we have, such as WIC, the food pyramid, and even requiring food labels on products, we are still choosing to eat refined sugar. The system we have now isn't working. People are still getting sick from preventable diseases caused by sugar and prevention is almost unheard of. Instead of allowing sugar to endanger our lives, we can step up and do something about it. The FDA should change its policies to include regulation of sugar similar as to the regulation of cigarettes and alcohol. There should be an age limit for people to be able to purchase refined sugar products. Commercials with products that contain refined sugar should be banned from marketing to children, and there should be warning labels on packaging of those products. According to the Transportation Research Board of the National Academies, minimum purchase age, or MPA laws, are probably the best recognized alcohol laws in the country. MPA laws establish 21 as the legal age for purchasing alcoholic beverages. Since the passage of MPA laws in all 50 states in the late 1980s, more than 17,000 alcohol attributable de youth traffic deaths have been avoided. That number is only inclusive to traffic deaths between the 1980s through 2007. Imagine the numbers of hospitalizations, birth defects, or even alcohol-related disease that went down. With that being said about alcohol, the same theory could be implemented for refined sugar. This plan will work in the same way regulating cigarettes and alcohol will work because it will prevent access to harmful substances and will promote purchase of healthier food options. The question is, why target underage youth? The reason we would target that specific age group is because you learn what to eat at a young age. When kids are exposed to harmful sugar, it teaches them to put it in their diet regardless. Rates of childhood obesity has also been increasing. According to Biomed Research International, globally, around 10% of school-going children carry additional body fat and 25% of them are categorized as obese children. Further, according to recent reports, the burden of Childhood obesity has risen 10 times in the last 40 years owing to changing diets and lack of exercise, which can be considered as major contributors to childhood obesity. By regulating sugar through FDA policies, we can improve the quality of our lives physically and financially. Effects of cutting sugar out of our diet is shown to reduce the chance of having cavities, to aid in weight loss and sometimes to reverse disease such as prediabetes. In turn, we benefit financially by not paying for prescriptions or doctor visits. It could even lessen the burden that taxpayers have with Medicare. I went over how sugar contributes to 
preventable diseases and how it can be addictive. Then I explain how we would be able to overcome detrimental health risks by regulating by regulation through the FDA. With intervention, we will be able to get sugar under control and finally eat to live instead of living to eat.